So, so far in our journey about electromagnetic radiation, we first started off thinking through Newtonian physics that electromagnetic radiation was a particle. Then we started, now we're at the point where we had Maxwell and Young's double slit experiment that showed that electromagnetic radiation is actually a wave. So with this, we are going to look at some certain interesting phenomena. Namely, we're going to be looking at reflection, refraction, and total internal refraction. But today's lesson is going to be mostly focusing on reflection. So right here, I have two different pictures of the same place, a lake. One is on a windy day, and one is on a still calm day. Here we see the reflection, it is perfect. Now, there are some key things here I want you to notice. Notice here where the bottom of the tree is at the bottom of the picture. Here, the bottom of the tree is at the top. We're going to, I want you to think about that, we're going to get to why a little bit later on. Now here, this is called diffuse reflection, and this is due to windy conditions. So we can't really see the trees very well here, but we can somewhat see the image there. So now before we get into really what reflection is, we must understand that light travels in straight lines called rectilinear propagation. The exact definition of this is movement of light in a straight line through a uniform medium. Because we're going to find out later that light will change. As it changes medium, the movement of light will change a bit. Okay? But we'll learn about that a bit later. So, here we go. Here I have a plane, a reflective surface, and right here I have a light ray. Now, if I look at this ray, it hits at this point here. The hit, the point, place where that specific ray hits the surface is called my point of incidence. Now, we always have a perpendicular line from the surface and the point of incidence, which is going to be called my normal. Now, we have two angles here. We have the angle of incidence, and we have my angle of reflection. Now these must always be equal. So let's think about this way. If I have a hockey puck and I shoot a hockey puck against the boards and it's a straight board, I know exactly the angle it's going to bounce off. We do this in many things. If I throw a bouncy ball as a little kid, I know exactly how the bouncy ball should bounce and which direction it will go on a flat surface because we know the angle of incidence must equal the angle of reflection. But that's for a particle, but light it works very much in the same way. So the law of reflection states the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence and is in the same plane. Okay. So, I look at this here, the image formation of a plane. So right here, we have these dashed lines here. What do these represent? So here I'm looking and my object's here. And when I'm looking from here, I'm going to see my object way over here. That's interesting. Here I'm looking, my object's here, but when I see it, my mind thinks the object's there. Now why is that? So what are these dashed lines? Are they real rays coming off? No, they are not. The dashed lines are just extension of the reflected rays causing our brain to believe that they are originating from way over here. So my object is shooting off an image or electromagnetic radiation or a light and it's hitting my mirror and then coming back to my eyes. Now my eyes see right here, it's going there. If we look at this, we keep on drawing my angle of incidence must equal to my angle of reflection, we said. And then if we continue this angle of reflection, this line straight, and we keep on going, that's where we end up seeing my image based on these two lines here. We're going to look at that a bit later, okay? So, our brains start believing that the image is behind the mirror, but this cannot be so. So since the object's here, and we think the object is way up here, what that means is, we are seeing something called a virtual image because it's on the other side of the plane. So now that I know what a virtual image is, well, what would it be called if my image of my object is on the same side or on the same plane, same side of the uh, plane as my object? Well, that is going to be called a real image. Projectors are a good example of this real image. Now, a key thing here is a real images are formed on diffusely reflecting uh, surfaces. So that means reflecting surfaces that have curves in them. So remember when we looked at the first, uh, on the first page there we had the nice still lake? Well the first one created a uh, 
virtual image. And the second one, well, it wasn't really clear, but those that's closer to a real image. Now, or a can, if it's done right. Now, before we get to know how to do this, we have to understand ray diagrams and how they work. So let's look at this here. So let's look at this image. So how do ray diagrams work? So I'm going to first show you this image here to help explain it. So I have a light source that emits out. Now we know my angle of reflection must equal to my incidence angle. Okay. Now if I extend these all these lines, ray lines out, I'm going to end up figuring out exactly where the image location is. So this angle, if we look at this again, is going to come out. This angle of reflection here, right there, must be equal, which continues if we continue it this way, is going to be equal to my incidence angle. So this angle reflection is equal to my incidence angle, which is going to give me my image the same distance away. So if I look at this here, how far behind the mirror does her image form if she is standing 50 centimeters in front of the mirror? Well, if she's standing 50 centimeters in front of the mirror, so let's look at this part here. We have this going here, and then my reflection is going to the eyes. Now, if we continue this reflection out up there, and we continue this here, everything is going to be equal distance. So she looks going to look 50 centimeters behind the mirror. That's what's going to end up happening. Now, is the, real, is the image real or virtual? Well, the image of this will have to be virtual because she's on this side of the mirror. So it's not on the same side that she's on, so that means the image is virtual. The question three says, according to the ray diagrams, two sections of the mirror can be removed. Okay. So, and her face would still be visible. Which two sections would those be? Well, if I look at this, I could kind of remove this section here, and I still see her face, and I can remove that section there. So I could remove I could remove A, B, and C, D. So quite often students ask me, how come when they look at a mirror, if they put their right arm forward, it looks like their left arm's coming forward? And vice versa, if you put your left arm forward, it looks like your right arm's coming forward. Well, I have a little example here, and I color-coded it to help you guys out. So if we remember, if I'm first looking at this red, the red is going to come here and hit the mirror, and that's going to be reflected. So my angle from the normal, which would be like around right here, uh, my incidence angle must equal to my reflection angle. So if I want to look at it, this is just a very simplified drawing. I'm going to have right here, we have 40 degrees from the normal, so then I have to go 40 degrees from the normal again there, which will be to 50. Okay? So I draw this, I'm going to get something that looks somewhat like this. Okay? Now, let's next look at my purple. And it moves a bit more this way from the eye. So we have right here from, it is again 40 degrees. So I'm going to go right here to 40. There's the purple. And we're going to draw my angle of incidence or my reflection for the purple. Which will look something like that. And then we're going to have my last one, which is the green. And we do the same thing again. And I end up getting something like this. So now, if we look at this very closely, if we notice here, the red's on the bottom, but here, the red's on the top. So the order of them kind of get reversed. That kind of explains why, when I put my right arm forward, it looks like in the mirror, my left arm's coming forward. And it has to do with the angles of reflection, and they bounce off. So if we were to bounce something off here, it's going to go there. Then if I move it over a bit and shoot at the same angle, it's going to come off to the side, and that's why they kind of get reversed. So now we're looking at an old diploma style question where a ray of light hits the mirror at 75 degrees as the angle of uh, incidence, and then it reflects off into a second mirror. Now it says, what is the angle between the final reflected ray and the surface of the second mirror? So basically, we're going to have something that goes like this. It's going to bounce off and then hit the second mirror, and then it's going to bounce off again. Well, I look at this here. My angle of, of uh, incidence must be equal to my angle of reflection. So I know this must be 75 degrees. 
I'm trying to figure out what is this angle here. Okay? Now, I'm looking at this. I can figure out what this is because this whole thing is 90. So this is going to be 15 degrees. Now, I know this is 142. So now I can figure out what this here is. So this is going to be... Uh, Now I know this whole triangle is going to equal to 180 degrees. So I have 180, and we're going to minus 142, and then we're going to minus 15 degrees to figure out what is this angle here. So all together here we get 38, and 38 minus 15 is going to be 23 degrees. So I know this is 23 degrees. Now if we put another norm here, the angle of reflection must equal my angle of incidence. So this angle must equal to this angle. Now if this angle equals this angle, and this is 90, and this must be 90, we are ending up going to end up getting 23 degrees uh, from the surface of the mirror is going to be my angle there. Now that we did some examples of images in a plane, we are going to have to look at some characteristics that our images can show. So first we're going to have to look at things like magnification. Is the image the same size? Is it enlarged or diminished? Think of when you're driving and you're looking in your rear view mirrors. They look a bit different. This one here is going to be smaller than some other ones. When you look in the mirror, notice how it says images may be closer than they appear. They seem far away. So that's displacement from the mirror surface. We're looking at magnification, whether it's enlarged, diminished, or the same size. They look smaller and farther away. That's position. Then attitude, if it's erect or inverted. Can you read it? Does it say ambulance easy? Whereas this image here, look, ambulance is backwards. So are they inverted? Next one is, is it, that's uh, our attitude. Then we're going to look at, is it real or virtual? And think of inverted. Have you guys ever gone into those really weird, mazy things with these mirrors? I always loved those when I was a kid. And your face would be distorted. Sometimes you're upside down. Sometimes you're this. There's places we could even find that we're going to look at where we stand. All of a sudden we disappear. We're going to learn all about that stuff coming here. Or else even if you played with spoons and you bring it to your face, there's concave, convex. There will be times where we disappear. Sometimes we're right side up. Sometimes we are upside down. We're going to look at all that here coming up in our part two video when we're looking at concave and convex mirror.